everyone and welcome to today's episode where we will discuss cyber security transformation. I'm your host Lakshmi Kandadai and I'm very excited to have with me today Anand Oswal, SVP and GM of Network Security at Palo Alto Networks. Anand, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. But before we get started, Anand, you are a seasoned veteran in the cybersecurity space. Can you provide our audience with some insights into your background and diverse leadership in cybersecurity? Sure, Lakshmi, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I started, I didn't start my career in cybersecurity, so I did my master's at uh, USC, where I spent a lot of time in networking in the late 90s, where uh, a lot of things around the internet was born, things like web caching, et cetera. And then over my career, I worked at startups, bare bone startups, mid-sized companies, and large organizations, and I've had different experiences. And a couple of years ago, when I was thinking, like, what's at the intersection of all of these things that are, that are going to be in the future? Uh, network security was something that I've, I was involved in a peripheral basis in some, some sense. I said, this is the place to be. And then when I met with the leadership team, with Nikesh, with Lee, with Nir, I was determined that this is the place to be in, and I'm, I'm so happy I made that decision. Wow, wonderful. And especially in today's world, in the ever-evolving cyber landscape, what are the most notable trends that you have been seeing lately in the field of cybersecurity? Uh, look, cybersecurity is ever-changing. I think uh, there are three or four big trends that, that we are seeing, that I'm seeing when I talk to customers, when I see around what's happening. First is the move to the cloud. Uh, we're seeing acceleration of, of, of workloads, applications moving to the cloud, and this is causing you know, network security architects, cloud security architects to rethink uh, to ensure how can we make sure that these applications are secure, that the infrastructure is secure. So that's the first trend. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not just around what's happening in the public cloud because most organizations are in multi-cloud domains. So it's not just uh, what's in the private cloud, in my data center, and then multiple public clouds. Uh, so it's hybrid. The second is, you know, this is a decade of hybrid. It's hybrid workforce, right? Uh, we're, in the, like, we're in the office today. Uh, we're at home uh, some, some other days. Uh, organizations are having to grapple with this hybrid workforce. Mm -hmm. In the pandemic, everybody was remote. Now we are half here, half there, right? And ensuring that we are able to secure this hybrid workforce um, in a consistent manner with the best in class uh, security, but also have consistent policies for users no matter where they are, mm -hmm. is going to be very critical. The third is around cyber attacks. Look, cyber uh, security is the only industry with an active adversary, right? Uh, they, the adversaries are also using the power of AI and ML. Mm -hmm. The attacks are getting more and more sophisticated. So organizations are grappling, how do we ensure that we are able to protect our organizations with this any, any phenomenon? You have any user accessing any application from any uh, location, from any device, data is everywhere. And I want to make sure that it's all secured consistently. I also want to make sure that we have the optimal user experience. Because we as users, we have become more and more demanding. Yeah. Uh, we want we want things right away, easy access, etc. And you also want to make sure that the network security admin has a consistent experience when they're trying to secure the entire enterprise infrastructure. So those are three or four trends that I'm seeing happen in the industry. Yep, great insights. And cybersecurity transformation, without a doubt, has been uh, the imperative for organizations to secure what they have today and to ensure that they are ready for what's next. Now, according to a recent report from Gartner, we are seeing that over 75% of security teams are considering consolidation, consolidating their security vendor footprint. What factors do you believe are compelling organizations to make this shift and pursue security consolidation? I think uh, it's a great question. If you think about the evolution of network security, uh, it happened over the last 20 plus years where applications were predominantly in a data center, you're securing with, uh, I would say, hardware security stacks, which means that hardware appliance like a next generation firewall, uh, software capabilities on that platform, perhaps a few additional hardware appliances from different vendors to secure application. That was one way. But then applications started moving to the cloud as well. To secure that, organizations said, look, I, I can't take the hardware firewall and put it in the public cloud. I want software firewalls, virtual machines, containerized firewalls to secure that those applications. And then you had the, the, the whole hybrid uh, uh, workforce, remote workforce uh, phenomenon, and Predominantly, security was delivered as a cloud-delivered stack, which mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cases the industry calls SASE or Secure Access Service Edge. Now, if you have different stacks from different vendors with different point products, it's very hard to have um, the best security experience. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do for user when I'm in the office? 
that is that I am accessing an application in my private data center versus me at home accessing a SaaS application, can I have that consistent security? So when you think of organization looking at consolidation, they're looking at consolidation uh, to simplify, first of all, their operations. Yep. It's too complex, it's too, co it's too complicated. They have plethora of tools. It's hard to understand how they can get a better security experience. Then there's cost. Mm -hmm. You have to manage multiple tools. You have to have your people trained on those tools. Mm -hmm. And then you're not still able to get the best outcome because you have to stitch uh, insights and data across multiple tools and you're just like, it, it's too hard. Then you, then you resort to the least common denominator of what you want to do, right? And third is that, you want to have better security. You want to have the network effect of data. When I turn on multiple services on a platform, how will each of them get better? Because they will share their intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so they realize that, look, the, the only way to achieve true enterprise zero trust is when they go on a consolidated journey. It's a journey because it takes time for people to evolve, organizations to evolve. But that is really how they're thinking about uh, consolidation. First, operational efficiency. Uh, the training of workforce and getting up to speed, cost for sure. But I think most important, they're looking at how do I get the best security outcome for my organization? That's what's driving it. And added to that is the cybersecurity talent shortage. Absolutely. Now, let's turn to AI and ML. What is the role of the breadth of data in informing AI? Many vendors today claim that they have AI-based solutions. But in your perspective, how do you think, how, how effective can this AI be if it only covers a specific silo like network or endpoints or even cloud? Yeah, it's a very good question. First, I think you can only do good AI when you have good data, right? And, 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 and you need good data that you can take from the bits and bytes of data on the, on the network, convert those bits and bytes of data into information, take the information, derive insights. From the insights, it leads to outcomes. It's a recursive loop. You've got to keep learning. If you think of the journey of AI in cybersecurity, it's around stitching data from disparate sources, yep. right? And then you need to correlate them. And that's why it's so important that A, you have data across all vantage points, mm -hmm. and then you're able to correlate this across network, endpoint, cloud, and, and all the enforcement points that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing about AI is around, look, it's, it's, you can only do good cybersecurity if it is through the power of AI and machine learning. It's yep. almost impossible to do it manually. If you think about the traditional way of doing cybersecurity, um, if you take a simple example of say URL filtering, mm -hmm. it's always been through a database centric approach. You crawl the internet for all URLs, you put URLs in categories, you assign a risk code to each URL, and then you set certain policies. Uh, now attackers are getting more and more sophisticated, like I told you earlier. So URLs go down and up, up and down in seconds, before I can build a database, it's gone. Or URLs are registered many years ago to be used today for attacks. So you really need to look at not just this database, but you have to look at the metadata of the URL, the content, and this can only happen through the power of AI and machine learning. And this will, this will apply across all facets of network security. 95% of all malware in the world today is morph malware, which means it's a variation of an existing malware. You can stop this inline, real time, through the power of AI and machine learning. You have data across multiple enforcement points, as, as you are able to protect this in real time, everybody else can benefit. And that's what I call the network effect of data for platform. And that's why it leads to the earlier point around why consolidation is useful. Because now you can share this data, you can share this threat intelligence across your enforcement points. Excellent insights, thank you Anand. Now, you have helped countless organizations transform their cybersecurity. Can you discuss some examples of successful cybersecurity consolidation initiatives that have significantly improved organization security posture? Absolutely. Look, um, Beam Suntory, the third largest uh, distal alcoholic beverage maker in the world, 75 to 80 global locations. In 2018, they had a cyber attack. And they realized that their, their infrastructure was getting more and more complicated and, and not simplified, not leading to good security outcomes. They wanted to consolidate uh, and move to a, have network transformation, have cloud transformation, but they wanted to really get the benefits of how do I ensure that I have consistent security mm -hmm. across all my enforcement points? How do I get networking and security delivered together as a single massively distributed cloud service with consistent security for any user at any, at any location accessing any application? Mm -hmm. And they worked with Palo Alto Networks on that journey to consolidate their journey across firewalls, uh, across SD-WAN, across Prisma Access, to get this 
consolidated platform experience where they have a single pane of glass to configure, to manage their entire real estate, to understand threats happening in, uh, across all of their enforcement points. So really successful use case. Mm -hmm. The second I can talk about is um, Village Roadshow. Mm -hmm. In Australia, uh, they have multiple theme parks, cinema, theater, etc. They really wanted to ensure that across all their assets, they had, they had a hybrid cloud architecture, which means that you have data centers through next gen, which, on which you're protecting through next generation firewalls. You have your remote workforce. They wanted SD-WAN to move away from legacy MPLS architectures, but they wanted to bring networking and security again together mm -hmm. through SASE. So across, our fire, across firewalls, across SASE, software firewalls, a simple and consistent platform-centric approach that is helping them be more secure that is helping reduce their operational costs, that is helping them ensure that they are having the better network security experience even for the admins. So you have a single way of configuring policy. Mm -hmm. You configure it once and then you can apply it across all your enforcement points. So you don't need to do things multiple repetitive times, simplifying the operations, simplifying their costs, better security. That's the outcomes they got. Thank you, Anand, for your perspective. Now, um, cybersecurity consolidation would also have an impact on the organization's operational efficiency and security efficacy. Can you tell us how exactly consolidation has helped organizations with those yeah. aspects? I think when you look at consolidation, you look, you look at it from multiple layers of operational efficiency and lenses. First is that as you reduce the number of tools and vendors that you have, it reduces the complexity of managing multiple tools, point products. That, that, that definitely reduce, uh, reduces the operational complexity of your environment, yep. the training of your staff, and the cost to support these things. Uh, of course, the most important benefit you get is the better security outcome, which is all, at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. But operational efficiency, cost reduction, ability for you to focus on what you do best mm -hmm. and let the, 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 the network security enforcement points do what they're best really helps the consolidation journey. Do you also agree it would help with a reduced procurement costs as well as the vendor Absolutely. selection process? Because when, when you have to interface with fewer vendors, you can build more strategic relationships with them, yeah. and then you can get a better outcome, both from a cost perspective, a training perspective, operational efficiency perspective, and a security experience perspective. Great. Now, looking to the future, what are the current trends and developments in AI and automation that we can expect to see in network security? Yeah. Look, I think 99% or so of all breaches that happen uh, uh, in a data center today happen because of misconfigurations yeah. or things that are not configured properly. So that is the number one pain point that we have. And the, and the only answer to that is how do you have automation and machines do it better than what we're able to do? Otherwise, you are either not configuring things because it's too complicated yeah. or you're configuring things incorrectly. So those are really important trends to get. The second is AI. Now, um, you know, AI can be abused in some sense, but if you think of AI in the product, it's about all the examples around how you can provide a better security experience, how you can protect customers from day zero threats, whether it's command control connections, software exploits, ransomware, phishing, and so on and so forth, right? How do you do those things in line, real time, through the power of machine learning and deep learning, where you're not able to really uh, uh, have to always go to process things offline, and have a poor user experience. So those things are exam examples of how AI and machine learning has and will continue to be enhanced to give us a better security experience. The third is really where you can get a better experience through AI from an operations perspective. So for example, you can envision that you want to be able to configure policies by asking AI on what is the optimal and best policy for a new SaaS application you're rolling out. What are the threats that you see in your network? So you can interface with the products in more natural language versus traditional way of doing multiple clicks to get to an answer. So those are all aspects of AI that will help us in our products. Wonderful. Now, what final piece of advice would you give our security leaders and CISOs as they embark on this journey towards consolidation? Yeah, I think, um, look, as you look at consolidation, absolutely an important integral factor of that is how do you ensure that you get enterprise-wide zero trust? And zero trust means no notion of implied trust. Right? How do you get consistent security for users accessing applications, accessing data from any device, on any network, from any location? How do you ensure that you have consistent and best-in-class security? How do you ensure that you have the optimal and best user experience? And how do you ensure that you can have the best admin experience for NetSec admin? 
all this is possible when only when you have uh, a platform centric approach where you have multiple form factors or enforcement points. You could have a hardware firewall for a data center, software firewalls for the public cloud, um, cloud delivered security for your remote workers and remote branches, but then you need to have it stitched together through a consistent security framework across all enforcement points, a consistent management plane across all these enforcement points from day zero, where you are installing these things, getting these things up and running, to do a day end when you're making changes in terms of how you want to configure, add users, add applications, monitor insights, all those capabilities are very important and that happens when you have a platform centric approach. Anand, it's been a pleasure having you with us today. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Palo Alto Networks is committed to being your cybersecurity partner of choice. To learn more about how we can help you with security consolidation, please visit us at paloaltonetworks.com.